Hello, everybody, and hope you are all safe and well. My name is Engineer Gilbert Novellero, coming all the way from the Philippines. I'm here to represent Bulacan State University and the Solid Waste Management Office of the Local Government Unit of Pasig City. And I'm very excited to present our research entitled Electronic Waste Analysis and Characterization Study, Management Input for Highly Urbanized Cities. Our key objectives coming out of this presentation would be, first, is to have a quick overview of what e-wastes are and cite some of the major environmental issues and problems associated to it. Second, is to discuss the method utilized in data gathering and determining of the top five e-waste categories in highly urbanized cities. Third, is to show the activities which were ex executed to characterize and analyze e-waste data. Fourth, is to talk over the findings and conclusions generated from the study. And lastly, to provide a concrete e-waste management recommendation, which can be implemented within the locality, and also recommendations for future enhancements and review of the research. Now, to give you an overview of the problem, let me provide some delineations and statistics about e-waste. E-waste, by definition, is any piece of electrical and electronic device which has reached the terminal of its useful life. According to the report released by the International Telecommunication Union, the United Nations University and the International Solid Waste Association last December 2017, 44.7 million metric tons of e-waste were generated in 2016, or that's about 6.1 kilograms per inhabitant on Earth. That is an alarming number, right? Moreover, as mentioned on the report, 2 to 5 kilograms of e-waste in the Philippines was produced per inhabitant. And based on their estimate, it's distressing that the global e-waste generation will reach 52.2 million metric tons by 2021. Most of the raw materials used in crafting electronic devices are non-biodegradable and contains hazardous metals such as lead, mercury, and cadmium, and it contains flame retardants and organic pollutants, which are toxic to man's health and environment. Improper e-waste handling results to health problems like skin diseases, kidney injuries, brain and central nervous system damage, or even death. It also results to air pollution, groundwater contamination, elevated acidity in the soil, and negative impact to wildlife. So in the review of the Waste Analysis and Characterization Study, or WACS, facilitated by Woodfields Consultant Incorporated in 16 distinct cities in Metro Manila, and as we all know, is the capital of the Philippines, Last April 2014, it was determined that there is no specific category for e-waste in the methodology. Displayed on the right-hand side is the summary of Pasig City's 2014 wax. And according to the study, e-waste is classified as either hazardous waste or special waste. This is one of the reasons why there is no concrete data that will illustrate the quantity of e-waste in the solid waste stream as the Philippines is concerned. The aforementioned issues were our motivations why we conducted the research to gather baseline data and initiatives in managing e-waste for highly urbanized cities. We have coordinated with the local government of Pasig City to achieve the previously mentioned objectives. The method that was adopted by the study was based on the mandate under the Republic Act 9003, or also known as the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. The act obliges the local government units of the country to prepare a 10-year solid waste management plans. The analysis and characterization of the e-waste was performed through the guidelines and principles of the act, but of course, incorporating e-waste in the classification of wastes. And in a nutshell, what you see on the screen are the general undertakings from the method. Let's begin with the first stage, which is preparation and training. Preparation and training covers the set of activities to make sure that all resources prior to the actual e-waste characterization are secured. Preparation and training begins with the identification of the e-waste sources. E-waste sources in the study were adopted from the previously used categories of Pasig City during the 2014 Waste Analysis for Consistency. On the screen are the categories of the e-waste sources. 
The National Environment Management Authority created a guideline for e-waste categorization and management in Kenya and served as the reference in establishing the e-waste categories. In this study, there were eight distinct categories of e-waste that were implemented and are displayed on the screen. Different sampling methods were used to select the samples and based on the method, small and medium local government units should have a total sample size of at least 30. The schedule of e-wax must cover at least one market day and one ordinary day following the guidelines of RA9003. A team needs to be created to carry out the actual characterization activities and data processing for the success of the e-wax. The selected location of the activity was the IPM PASIG management, waste management site because the waste after the characterization can easily be disposed to the segregation and dumping area. E-waste activity requires budget for the procurement of the needed tools, materials, fuels for the collection vehicles, food and medical and safety kits. Cooperators were given an orientation on solid waste management and instructions regarding the e-waste or the e-wax process a few days before the activity. And in the planning stage, a staff member was delegated to be an encoder who is familiar with the recording software. The second stage of the method is the actual e-waste characterization. And this stage covers the set of activities carried out in determining the weight and composition of the e-wastes, which were generated by different waste sources. The stage starts with a collection and ends with the quality control of the data forms prior to data processing. The stage begins with a collection of the waste bags from the selected cooperators followed by transporting the waste to the characterization area. Next step is to check the EWAX field data entry form where the e-waste recorder validates the EWAX field data entry form for all samples received. Next is weigh the whole e-waste sample from each cooperator and record the total weight in the data entry form. Next, e-waste samples from the cooperators for each waste source are forwarded to the mixing area. Assigned mixers divide the variegated waste into four parts, and then the sampler determines which part is to be used for sorting, and the remaining parts which were not selected are disposed. Then the selected portion is weighed and recorded afterwards. The sample is forwarded to the sorting area, and sorters will classify the e-wastes according to the eight predetermined e-waste categories. And then the recategorized e-wastes are weighed and recorded to make sure that the sum of the weights of each e-waste subcategory plus other non-e-waste is equal to the whole e-waste sample from the cooperators. The third stage of the method is the data processing and analysis. So after completing the field activity, analysis and interpretation of the raw waste characterization data was performed. Here are the findings and conclusions derived after conducting the activity. First is, the WAX approach upon review does not have any procedure of categorizing e-waste. This was the opportunity that the research utilized. The activity of incorporating e-waste in the WAX process is known to be the e-WAX or the Electronic Waste Analysis and Characterization Study. From the 261.44 kilograms average daily solid waste, 1.65 kilograms or 10.39% comprises e-waste. Hence, e-waste ranks fourth among other waste categories, and overall daily waste generation per person is 350 grams, and in terms of e-waste generation, the amount is 40 grams. So after conducting the e-wax, the top e-waste categories, which comprise the solid waste of Basic City, were determined. The breakdown of each composition is shown on the slide. Based on the results, Income is a great contributor in the e-waste generation behavior of the households. It was determined that households under the middle income class contributed significantly to the e-waste generated in the city. With the determination of the top five e-waste categories, a recommendation was proposed for Pasig City to implement as part of their future waste management plans. The concrete recommendation provided by the study is the Pasig City Waste Advantage Card, 
where consumers can exchange their e-waste into points, which will be stored in a card that can be used as privilege card, where the card holder can, can be prioritized to some of the offices of Pasig City. Moreover, card holders can also enjoy services such as massage, health checkup, attend to concerts, and etc. Here are some recommendations that the study endorses for future research enhancements. First is a method of getting the volume of the e-waste is required in order to look at the data on a different perspective and not only basing the con conclusions using a single parameter, which is the weight. Implementation of the data gathering and rec recommendation to be carried out on a national scale is necessary to derive the initiative and be accepted for a more wide range scope. Third is streamline the sample for the non-household sectors to eliminate outliers on the data. And fourth is Solid Waste Management Office of incorporating local government units should find for a third party provider who can design the program or algorithm and the library or database of the Waste Advantage card as part of their online portal. Now, before we conclude the presentation, let me take a pause to answer any outstanding questions from the audience. Thank you so much for listening, and it's a privilege of sharing our study to everyone. We appreciate those who provided feedback and raised questions. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And again, this is Engineer Gilbert Novellero. Arigato gozaimasu, and take care, everyone.